entered in the boundary layer and broke up that vortex. We got to work. So there's great YouTube footage of this flying around if you want to. So we'll look to F1 and find it. And then that's the LLRV, which is the Lunar Lander Research Vehicle. So they built those to teach you guys how to fly the land on the moon. Um, so the, the vertical mount jet engine in the front would provide seven eighths of the thrust of the weight of the whole vehicle. And it's gimbaled, it moves about 15 degrees in each direction. Uh, the rest of the thrust, thrust came from these little peroxide jets. So they would pump pure hydrogen peroxide uh, over these nickel catalyst beds in this thing, and it would catalyze and turn into steam, and that's what would make the thrust for these little puffer. So that's actually how the control was produced, by these little little puffer jets. So it was the very first uh, RCS re reaction control system. Uh, one of the neat things about this aircraft that a lot of people don't realize is everybody knows what digital fly-by-wire is, right? It's like a normal thing. The F-8 Crusader is the first digital fly-by-wire airplane, right? No, it's not. This is. This oh. came before that. So this flew fly-by-wire before the F-8 did. Um, they call that the first digital fly-by-wire airplane. This is aircraft. Yeah. How high did this go up? Uh, they eventually got like 1,500 feet or something crazy like that. And again, if you're on YouTube, you can see Neil Armstrong punched out one of these down at the Cape Canaveral. This is safe as that, right? You can see where we did. Come back here and look. Look back here for a second. Uh, these are the peroxide tanks. I'm sorry, these are the main fuel tanks. These are peroxide tanks back here. Um, these are radar altimeters right here. And then back here is the very first analog digital flight control computer. So that's the very first fly-by-wire. One of the neat things about that is, you know, now when you want to make a game change for a control system, you simply input a new, a new value into your computer, right? Well, that didn't exist back then. They literally unsoldered a wire and moved it to a different resistor value to change the, change the gain set. So, pretty cool stuff. So, if you look around the vehicle, there's, there's little thrusters on all the corners. So, these are control yaw. I'm sorry, roll. These are control yaw. So you fire this one here, and the one on the opposite corner of the front, and you yaw on the right, opposite of the left. So How much could they fly in this? I imagine it's not an easy thing to fly. It didn't have any natural stability like the thing. No, no, not at all. Um, it was stability augmented. They did have a stability system on board, and that's you know, the, the, uh, the main engine of the game. Did any other survive, or just the only one? There's two left. Uh, and again, this is a real one. It's kind of cool. I mean, they call them monogamies, but there's two. Incredibly historic examples here. That's a one of one, right? Yeah. And this is a one of three. It's one crash. Uh, I believe it's a right path. I'm not entirely certain. Awesome. But pretty cool to understand the technology back in the day, you know, that allowed this to happen. Is uh, you, know, you have infinitely more computing power than a phone than a separate. It's resistant. Oh, that's a that's a. That's a 3.8 F15 they used to do spin testing on. You notice it's got taller rudders on it? 